Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all speaker chairs and wonderful audiences in different parts of the world. Welcome to the SNS webinar. The speaker for the first session today is our honorable guest from China, Professor Wang Tao. Professor uh, Tao is a professor and uh, doctorate supervisor and chief physician at the Neurosurgical Department of Neurosurgery, uh, Peking University Third Hospital. He is also a deputy director of the Cerebral Vascular Disease Center, uh, Peking University Third Hospital, Beijing, China. He's the cha vice chairman of the Ischemic Stroke Surgery Branch of Stroke Expert Committee of the National Health Commission of the China and Cerebral Vascular Disease High Risk Group Management Branch, China. Uh, stroke Society. He's also Vice President of uh, Cerebral Vascular Disease Branch of Chinese uh, Geriatric Society. He's a well-known author and also editorial board member and reviewer of 13 academic journals. He's also a visiting professor at the West, West Mill Hospital University of Sydney, of Australia. His clinical interest is focused upon the management of cerebral vascular disease. He's the leading expert in China on the surgery of carotid artery, have dealt with uh, over 4,000 carotid carotid and ductectomy and 100 cases of a carotid body tumor resection. We are extremely honored to have him today at our webinar and today he'll be talking about surgery of carotid body tumor. The speaker for second session today is our honored guest from Germany, Dr. Dragan Jankovic. Uh, Dr. Jankovic is assistant doctor at the Polyclinic of Neurosurgery at the Johannes Gutenberg University of Mainz, uh, Germany. He's also a current fellow uh, with uh, Professor Yokokato at the Fujita Bentene Hospital, Nagoya, Japan. We are extremely honored to have him today at our webinar, and today he'll be talking about CFD in neurovascular cases, a Fujita experience. The chair for the first session today is our honored guest from Saudi Arabia, Professor Imad Kanan. Uh, Professor Kanan is the chairman emeritus, Department of Neurosciences, Professor and Senior Consultant Neurosurgeon Director of KFSH and Research Center and World Federation of Neurological Surgeons, a skull based international fellowship, King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center, Riyadh Al Faisal University Faculty of Medicine. He's also the president elect of the World Academy of Neurosciences and founder and honorary president of the International Neuroanatomy Association. He's also the chairman of the, the WFNS Scoville Award a Committee yeah. and the past president of AOIC, SBS, and ACNS. We are extremely grateful to him for accepting our invitation to chair the first session of today's webinar. The chair for the second session today of our webinar is our honorable guest from the United States of America, Professor David Hassan. He is a professor of neurosurgery at the Department of Neurosurgery, Duke University Graduate School of Medicine, Duham, North Carolina. Well, professor Hassan is a scientist neurosurgeon with extensive experience in management of cerebral vascular diseases and skull based tuber. He's a fellow of dual trend open cerebral vascular and endovascular with a background of treating over 2,500 brain aneurysm using very innovative techniques, including awake surgery. He's an international authority in cerebral vascular research with over 270 peer review PubMed publication, multiple NIH grant, and member of several editorial boards with high impact medical and surgical journals. We are extremely grateful to him for accepting our invitation to chair the second session of today's webinar. On behalf of the Education Committee of the SNS and the President, Professor Yukoto, I would like to welcome both the speaker and chairs and, the, and all the audiences on this uh, online platform of SNS webinar. A warm welcome to our colleague in China, and we are extremely thankful to Professor Zubin for broadcasting this webinar on WeChat channel. With that introduction, I would like to hand over this podium to our first chair, Professor Imak Kanan. Professor, please. Thank you, Bung, and uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, very interesting uh, topics uh, for today. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Kato and Mr. Zubong for inviting me to be chairing here. I'm supposed to give a small, a short introduction because this is not my major domain. I am here to learn from Professor Wang Tao, who is going to talk about carotid body that I don't practice much on it. This is an interesting, rare uh, disease in my practice, and I think worldwide. I think he has, uh, or I'm exceeding 100 cases, the largest series in the world on the carotid body uh, surgical intervention. This is, again, follow the track of neurovascular in general. It has become a, a watershed area of practice from different disciplines, including interventional radiologists, radiation oncologists, mm -hmm 
genitis more recently, and of course, head and neck and uh, skull based surgeon. And uh, talking about carotid body is uh, again, it's uh, I rarely see it and uh, or I get involved. Unfortunately, this is part of the kingdom of practice, but we neglect it in one way or other. Good that we have people like Professor Wang Tao that he is developing the experience, maintain that one practice in the field of uh, surgery. And uh, uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Professor Wang Tao from China and uh, been to your place and to your hospital. I've seen many of the, your uh, predecessors uh, in that hospital. Fantastic practice, and I'm sure you are moving forward with your practice. Go ahead, Professor Wang Tao. Thank you. Uh, I'm Wang Tao from Peking University Third Hospital. And uh, today, I will uh, share an uh, interesting topic. Respect is host. Uh, my topic is uh, microsurgical treatment of carotid body tumor. I'm Tao Wang from Peking University Third Hospital. Uh, more than 4,000 uh, carotid endarterectomy and more than 100 carotid body tumor operations have been undergone by myself. And our CA advantages on the microscope, many incidents, about uh, uh, three centimeter, it runs within 22 hours and discharge four days after operation. Carotid artery-related disease, no limit, no limited to carotid endarterectomy. Recently, we have performed more than more and more operations for the treatment of various carotid artery disease, including carotid body tumor, CBT. Uh, neurogenic tumors and bifurcation of carotid artery, trauma, consult, wound involving carotid artery, excranial carotid artery aneurysm, and sedu aneurysm. Carotid body tumor is a kind of camerodactoma located at the carotid bifurcation adhesion to common or internal carotid artery. Carmodacotoma or uh, pedoganglia oma. Potential malignant about 10%. Physical resection is the exclusive treatment op or option. Extremely complication due to the rich blood supply and the involvement of cranial nerves. The history of CBT, first described by the Wang Heller. Winners tried to remove uh, CBT, but failed. The patient died of the hemorrhage and uh, neurologic complications in 1888. Mendel managed to remove uh, CBT, but uh, uh, hemiclegia and uh, uh, fissure occurred. Sandor reported a successful resection of CBT without uh, carotid artery ligation. First CBT resection and value anastomosis was reported in 1938. Using a statistical analysis based on pathology data, Hamilton and Clayton thought about 10% CBT were malignant. Professor Huang Zhuqiang reported two cases of CBTs that were successfully removed in China. A teaser, still unclear. Chronic hypo, hypoxia is one of the risk factors. Higher mobilities in high attitude smokers, COPD patients, lower oxygen levels can reduce compensation, uh, compensatory. Hyperplasia of a carotid body, which may lead to noplasia. 
partially related to uh, pirating. And uh, pathology, red, brown, or greasy is red, round or degree, uh, nodular or lobular, usually soft in nature, and sometimes tough or hard. Uh, this case is extremely difficult to, uh, to remove. So rotting the carotid artery is after uh, a true capture, rich in feeding vessel from ECA, originating from pedagoglia cells, uh, epicellid cells arrange the distinguished cluster, uh, zeppelin sign, and the cells called usually separate, uh, separated by the uh, prominent capillary network location and the microscope anatomy of carotid bar. Uh, sampling classification, according to the relation, relationship between CBT and uh, uh, carotid artery wall, sampling divided CBT into three types. Type one, small tumor, Little adhesion to artery wall, easy to resect. Type two, uh, surrounding the vessel partially, difficult to resect without artery injury. And type three, big tumor, increasing the vessel and carotid bifurcation, carotid resection and uh, vascular transplantation are necessary. Uh, is uh, type one and uh, type two partially envelope and uh, type three uh, nerve and uh, artery was in same. Sibling classification and uh, the is decision. Type one small lo uh, loca locally, uh, localized tumor. Dissected in peri adventure plan and is actually no difficult. But uh, type 2 is a uh, large and uh, adherent tumor, subtotal vessel in season. Dissection is difficult. And type 3, large tumor with total vessel encasement, difficult, maybe need the vascular uh, sacrifice and vascular placement. Clinical features are symptomatic mass in neck area, occasionally located, uh, localized pain and cranial nerve dysfunction. Uh, Chanky finger, uh, tall deviation, ornus syndrome, may be manifestation given the close proximity the mass to nerve. On physical examination, a CBT is a firm rubbery mass that is mobile horizontally and not what you carefully. Uh, audible vascular mama. Uh, we can see a uh, uh, symptomatic review, a uh, systematic review and um, meta analysis of representative and surgical man management of patients with carotid body tumors. Uh, this is a large symptomatic review and meta analysis uh, detailing the representative management and the procedure complication following the carotid body tumor surgery, although uh, relatively rare. Complication associated with CBT are not inconsider inconsiderable, especially in more than challenging sampling three CBTs. Well, uh, procedure stroke with was about four percent, while cranial uh, nerve injury rate approached twenty percent, and the increased morbidity uh, 
associated with the sampling three tumor must be considered during the concept process. Uh, we can see the female uh, virus uh, male is uh, two to one. And symptom of a CBT uh, are symptomatic about uh, 46 and the symptomatic about uh, 14%. And an outcome, a uh, 30 day death is about 2.2% uh, and uh, 30 day stroke about 3.5% uh, per, uh, and the 30 day stroke 73 is about 4%. It is very high. And the cranial injury about 27.8. And the persistent cranial injury is about 11%. Post-operative outcomes uh, including the cranial nerve injury after cranial after carotid body tumor ex uh, excision. Uh, especially uh, cranial nerve uh, 12, 10, and uh, 7 or 9. Treatment, not sensitive to radiation or chemotherapy. Tierno, the only way to cure is the uh, surgery. Hypervascular deep and high location adherent to arteries and nerves artery injuries difficult in uh, hemostasia, hemodrills, uh, and the cerebral vascular complications. Preoperative uh, embolization might help reduce bleeding, and it's a challenging surgery. Uh, let me see uh, cases from my center. Case one, it's a type two sampling. It's a preoperative CTA. We can see the tumor located the bifurcation and uh, uh, under uh, in, involved bifurcation. It's pre-operation MRI. We can see the tumor. Uh, you can see the tumor uh, in west uh, carotid artery. And after removed, uh, we can see the blood vessel is clear. Uh, Post-operative CTA, uh, the tumor disappeared. A uh, case two is assembling two, and uh, we can see the tumor located uh, bifurcation and the IC and the ECA. Uh, it's HRMI and uh, uh, preoperative DSA and uh, MRI and CTA. Uh, this is a case of type 2 carotid body tumor surgery. Because of the tumor is uh, uh, relatively soft, so it is easier to dissect. Dissect uh, bipolar electrical angulation and special tissue scissors were used to dissect along the potential interface between carotid artery and the body tumor. Fortunately, this tumor is uh, relatively soft, so it's relatively easy to remove. When 
separating the bottom of the tube. Pay special attention not to damage the deep nerve. Finally, the hypoglossal nerves was separated. and exposed and protected. The tumor is completely removed, no no and blood vessel damage. Uh, it's, uh, Pre-operative CTA and post-operative CTA. Before resection, the tumor and after resection. Let me see, case three. Uh, is pre-operative DSA. And uh, it's in skin incision. We can see the CBT and uh, after remove, we can see CCA, ICA, and the ECA and the uh, uh, cyperglossive nerve and uh, post-operative CTA. Uh, this case is a uh, sampling three. Sampling three, that means the tumor is very large and uh, uh, rubbed of occasion and uh, uh, CCA, ICA, and ACA. Preoperative DSE. We can see the tumor and the artery the skin in season. The CBT and the CBT is removed. That is a tumor. Carotid arteries and cranial nerves were uh, preserved comple completely. And uh, carotid body tumor uh, protecting nerves is very is vital. Uh, it's the pre-operative CTA, and uh, after operation, we can see CTA. The tumor is disappeared, and it's HR MRI uh, before operation. After operation, uh, let me say he uh, CT this chest hospital. Uh, from what they said, when they left the hospital, we can say that there was no nerve injury. Uh, are you happy to be discharged today? Of course. Thank you, Professor Wang, and uh, uh, for we solved the big problem for me. And uh, uh, case file. Uh, this is a uh, uh, patient from Russia, and uh, she had two tumors, uh, bilateral CBT, carotid artery, uh, carotid artery ligation in the right side was performed in Russia local hospital due to the intraoperative hemorrhage a definite high-risk patient, pre-operative CTA, and right is uh, ligation. The right carotid artery was ligation, uh, was ligated, and the blood supply of all the brain depends on the left carotid artery. We can see the video. Uh, fortunately, the tumor is soft. 
uh, first separate the hyperglossive nerve, then separate the internal uh, jugular, jugular vein, then separate the internal carotid artery, and to separate the external carotid artery. Finally, separate the bifurcation of a carotid artery. Then the tumor was completely removed. No no and blood vessel injury. Uh, is tumor removed? We can see pre-operative CTA and uh, post-operative CTA, the tumor is disappearance. And uh, after operation, uh, we can see the artery and the cranial nerve were preserved completely. Um, let's see seven, uh, case seven. Case seven, a uh, carotid body tumor of a uh, uh, bilateral. This side should be the first. Bilateral CBT, the left tumor did not develop well in CTA and uh, at the uh, arterial phase of DSE. Why? HRMII, so two CBTs on the both sides of carotid bifurcation uh, involving the scar basis. And uh, we decided to remove the left on first. Why? And uh, what would you, what would you do if you were the doctor in charge? Although the tumor was tough and hard, to separate, we succeeded to in removing it, perceiving the nerve and the main vessel intact. We can see MRI, uh, the artery was uh, wrapped by the CBT. So it's sampling three. And uh, DC and uh, Balloon occlusive test, BOT, uh, shows poor collateral circulation. The left CBT before resection, in kitchen CCA, ICA, and ACA. And uh, interoperative fluid resection and your graphic. Then after resection, CCA, ICA, and ACA were preserved complete. And the post-operative flow resin and geography. Uh, let us see case eight. Uh, it's a uh, interesting uh, cases, a giant CBT. Uh, had undergoing operation for three times. Uh, we often deal with the patients who, whose operations have failed in other hospital. This is an uh, extremely complicated and challenging case. The patient underwent the first operation in the province hospital for dental carotid body tumor. Intraoperatively, the tough tumor was formed to envelop the uh, nerves and blood vessels. The bleeding was difficult to control. After more than 10 hours of surgery, the tumor was fully to remove. Only a small portion of the tumor was resection for pathology. Unfortunately, the very neurological complication occurred after, uh, after his surgery, including awesomeness coughing and drag, uh, displeasure and uh, this, this, uh, this dream. After 
half of year of incessant patient was uh, referred to Beijing. They visited several famous hospitals, but no hospital admitted him because difficult and high risk of surgery. Finally, he was introduced to our hospital. We had an MDT discussion with several departments, and the patient entered the operation room for the second time. I have after entering the operation, for the patient had very low oxygen saturation, and he also has sleep apnea. The anesthesia losses to assess the patient and then turn him back to work. Then we uh, carry out the procedure with uh, uh, relevant department. Finally, the department of ENT used a uh, no incived uh, ventilator and the oxygen uh, saturation was improved after a period of uh, adapt adaptation. Then we entered and uh, operation, uh, entered the operation room for the third time and uh, found the local adhesions were serious and the local anatomic uh, structures was uh, uh, completely changes and uh, the uh, anatomic uh, dissection was very difficult. A tumor was found to pass in nature into the operative and the nurse and the world workers was, uh, were all destroyed, destroyed and uh, surrounded the tumor. After protecting the nerve, we removed the body tumor together with the invisible blood vessel. Then a piece of artificial blood vessel was uh, uh, transplanted by pus. The blood flow was most after operation. The patient was charged with setting by. This is a very difficult and flexible uh, cases. Uh, Pre-operative, we can see the giant operative and the uh, uh, MRI. MIR, HRMIRI, uh, the artery was wrapped. And the uh, preoperative DSE. Post operative, we can see the artificial uh, vascular. Uh, let's see another case. Uh, is still a giant uh, tumor in with the scar waste and after remove we can see the pre uh, uh, the CTA uh, uh, at fact in fact uh, the skin incision is very large and uh, uh, we can see the incision. Uh, of course, we have many cases of the secondary cases of uh, CBT. Uh, let me see. Tumor in this case that rocket the uh, Rocket artery and know closely. The patient underwent the first operation in a local hospital. The surgery was uh, terminated because of uh, uncontrollable bleeding. The patient is introduced to our hospital. The second operation was very difficult due to the local adhesion and unless that we changed And uh, she was satisfied when she dis uh, this Another secondary cause the artery. The patient underwent 10 hours of surgery at a local hospital. The first surgery was stopped because of consistent bleeding. The patient was admitted to our hospital. It carried out a fully free revision before surgery. 
However, due to the severe disease, it is extremely difficult to decide. Uh, it's two cases. And uh, this is a nine, uh, another giant CBT uh, preserved scar base into uh, pharyngeal cavity. We can see the giant tumor in this scar base. And the giant carotid body tumor a mass pharyngeal cavity can be seen through the open mouth. We can see the wall of the tumor. And the medial margin was uh, one millimeter to the pharyngeal activity. And the posit to the opposite, the CBT involved the scar base So the giant CBT, uh, this is uh, CCA and ICA, ECA was uh, uh, encased together with the tumor. After the mole, uh, CCA, ICA and uh, ECA were exposed clearly. Is hypoglossive nurse. And uh, in the operative fluorescent angiography, so the uh, obstructive blood flow and the post operative CTA, uh, we can see the tumor disappears and uh, the patient will satisfy when she discharged. Uh, this is another case of giant CBT uh, in saved uh, scar bases and uh, invested the uh, pharyngeal cavity. And uh, a mass in pharyngeal cavity can be seen through the open mouth. It's giant uh, tumor. And uh, the ECA and ICA was uh, wrapped, was surrounded. The CCA was sur surrounded by C CBT. And the pharyngeal cavity was post. And the preoperative DSA. Uh, removed piece by piece. Artificial blood vessel transplant this uh, CBT piece by piece. And uh, this artificial blood vessel bypass. Uh, CTA was concerned for IDN allergy and uh, post operative HRMRI. We can see the tumor is disappeared. And the, the artery pendency. The curried body tumor, uh, the tumor had fused with the vessel like concrete and steel. Uh, this case, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the tumor is very, very hard very tough. Uh, so uh, the artificial vascular, the artificial vascular uh, is not, and uh, totally we remove the artery with uh, vessel ligation. We can see MRI, uh, ECA, ICA, and CCA was wrapped the vascular was surrounded. Preoperative DSA, uh, we can see 
the blood supply is very rich. And uh, preoperative DSA or balloon occlusion test, BOT, indicating a satisfactory compensation, uh, compensatory circulation. So it is the basis of uh, uh, ligation. Let's see the video. Uh, firstly, we expose the tumor at the first location of the carotid battery. We separated the tumor at the top, and we found the blood supply is extremely rich. We used uh, uh, electro-coagulation for hemostasis. By the touch of the top of the deep part, the body is very, very hard. Uh, we tried to dissect in the tumor of bifurcation and bleeding was uh, fierce. The tumor is uh, difficult to separate it from the, uh, surface, from the surface of the artery. Therefore, we tried to dissect the tumor piece by piece. But the bleeding was uh, very serious. Because the tumor is very tough, we touch the tumor with my finger. The, uh, the difficult to separate the artery or connect the artificial blood vessel. The solid tumor is like a reinforced concrete. The body tumor completely invaded the carotid artery and its branches. Eventually, according the preoperative balloon occlusion test, we decided to remove the body tumor together with the blood vessel and uh, ligate the dis distal artery. and the incision was closed after careful hematostasis. The post-operative CTA, we can see the collapsing is, uh, is very good and the tumor is uh, removed. And uh, this is the tumor removed. Uh, we can see uh, post-operative the, uh, the patient. Stick your tongue out and let me see. Good. Use your hands, very good. Move your feet, great. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we had a case of cerebral infarction after Location of blood vessel, although the preoperative uh, BOT was uh, passed. At present, the patient is recovering and can walk with assistance. Uh, different uh, diagnosis. Uh, many diseases can be uh, diagnosis. Different diagnosis, uh, different diagnosis with uh, CBT. For example, uh, the giant uh, extra cranial carotid artery. Preoperative HRMI, we can see the artery. Uh, Preoperative DAC, uh, we can see the artery. CCA and the hypoglossive nerve. After remove any reasonable wall, and we use uh, artificial vessel bypass and the post operative APA, the artery is pendency. A diagnosis tool, a neurogallic tumor at the carotid artery bifurcation.
and uh, MRMIR, HRMRI. Uh, Intra operation, we can say the tumor is not uh, uh, in uh, rapid bifurcation and uh, branch. Uh, Glomus vagal tumor is a kind of uh, neurogenic tumors. Uh, summary, surgical resection is a uh, exclusive, exclusive effective pros to cure CBT. Uh, sufficient preoperative pre, uh, preparations is necessary. Sampling mm -hmm. uh, classification. Uh, type three is the most risk. Uh, MATAS test or BOT is necessary. Uh, prepare uh, a pre preceded SART and pre-operative embolism might reduce bleeding and uh, unsupportive in, my, in our institute. And uh, uh, revascularization of carotid artery. Make full assessment about uh, low lateral circulation and uh, compensatory compar this complexity in case of uh, unexpected carotid ligation. The key point is to remove the tumor while pre pre preserving the carotid artery and uh, deeper nerves. Newer surgery has uh, the advantage of better uh, understanding about uh, cranial nerves. In our center, there is uh, there are still a large number of uh, complication, complicated cases are not presented due to the time limitation. And uh, we will high appreciate if you are interested in our clinic e experience. And uh, as a carotid uh, surgery center, uh, we train we have trained advantaged doctors from all over the country and overseas, and are trained all over the country to help the uh, provincial and the local hospitals to carry out the carotid artery. And uh, uh, carotid body tumor is a real condition. It is uh, uh, located the neck involved the multiple disciplines. In the early, the, uh, in the early, the uh, early years in China, the disease can be managed by various departments, including but not limited to vascular surgery, ENT, head and neck surgery, cardiac surgery, and even general surgery. Though general uh, neurosurgeons also do the CBT resection, but the number, but the number was uh, limited. In fact, the neurosurgeons with the outstanding uh, micro many uh, skills can do this uh, procedure better than any other disciplines with uh, interoperative fluences, angiography, and endoscopy. Uh, therefore, uh, we should uh, call on neurosurgeons to pay more attention to the carotid body tumors. Thanks. Thank you. That's Thank all. you, Professor Wang, for this wonderful overview. Uh, you were very meticulous with the time and uh, presenting nice, challenging cases. The uh, 12 cases are uh, admirable, and you have really vast experience. I have a few questions you answer. Some of them during your talk, I prepared a few questions. There was a question from the uh, attendees, which I share with him. What are the measures if you have a perforation or injury to the carotid artery? What are the measures? You mentioned something about the occlusion test pre-hand in some cases like sampling uh, three, the advanced uh, large tumors. Do you do any other neurophysiology monitoring for these cases to prevent or anticipate stroke if you are going to close the vessel? Uh, 
like somatosensory evoke potential. We do it when we used to do an aneurysm surgery to predict early ischemic changes on the brain if we are going to include one of the major carotid. When we meet the, the difficult cases, uh, including the giant uh, CBT involved uh, scar base or involved uh, pharyngeal cavity. Uh, in, instead, it is uh, very difficult. Uh, uh, and in fact, uh, we uh, MDT, uh, we use MDT to uh, consult and uh, um, our microscope, uh, we can easy to uh, remove the tumor uh, when the tumor uh, is very soft. But when the tumor is very tough, very hard, and the bleeding is serious, um, the remove is very, very difficult. Uh, so uh, we uh, represent to, uh, to use uh, artificial, uh, artificial vascular to uh, bypass. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, the artery was invaded until the scar based and uh, we use uh, and uh, no space to bypass so uh, we had to remove the tumor with artery and the ligation uh, before operation uh, uh, built in uh, so when they uh, when they made the giant difficult or uh, tough or hard uh, CBT, uh, indeed it is difficult to deal with. Do you, you use only uh, the synthetic graft like Dacron or you use as well uh, saphenous vein as an interposition? You get the question, uh, Professor Wang? Is it only use a graft, synthetic graft like a dacron, or you use autologous from the body like a saphenous vein as interposition, as a graft? Uh, I, I prefer to use uh, artificial uh, artificial. vascular to, uh, to plant, to bypass, and not uh, 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 vein. Because, uh, you, yeah, go ahead. Do you include interventional radiologists in these cases to be on standby, like putting a balloon uh, for the closure or putting uh, uh, any material to help you during the procedure if you get bleed or stent? Are they involved on the team? the interventional radiologists in your cases, or you don't have them available, or you don't have the expertise? Uh, uh, in, early, uh, in early years, uh, we try to uh, use balloon or uh, in, in with invitation. But uh, we found. The reason I ask this question, I want to come to the next point. This is the value of dual training that is popularized for other vascular, neurovascular disease, that people are trained in neurovascular surgery. At the same time, they have the expertise in interventional radiologists. So perhaps this applies in future to train people in that uh, domain. My other question, I have two more. Uh, what is, I know these are non-functional tumors usually in general, they are not functional like other paragangliomas. Do you in, infiltrate the area with any medication or fluid 
that reduce the sensitivity of the coveted body, or usually they are not that harmful during the manipulation. Do you put anything around the coveted body? You inject xylocaine or any other medications? Who have the is a dysfunction tumor uh, can yeah. insist for long years, uh, but uh, about ten percent is malignant. So uh, more early, more remote. Thank you. Okay. Any cases referred to radiation oncology? Because there, there is a trend, people, they're treating some of these tumor with radiation. What is your take on this one? I can understand for your presentation, all they were amenable for surgery in one way or other, and this is the cure or the best management. But which cases you will refer to radiation oncologist? Wang Jiao Shou, do you have to do it? Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, already mentioned that this kind of tumor was not very sensitive to the radio uh, radio surgery yeah, yeah i yeah. understand but uh, this is in practice actually like yeah. we see it in some of the shawano uh, in some meningioma and in intracranial is they are not sensitive but people they become desperate to give some treatment especially in elderly people or people they have major comorbidity to undergo surgical intervention and this disease cannot be left untreated because there is 10% transformation to malignancy. And that's why I asked this question. Anyhow, this is a, one, the last question I want to see. There is a lot of paper on the genetic mutations, uh, succinyl dehydrogenase genes, variants. How do you see the value of this genetic uh, counseling? Because you see, they said the multiple lesion and a younger person, family history, and uh, these are the cases they might have this genetic aberration. Do you see any value in this uh, counseling? Do you do it? I just want to ask you, have you done the research in the brain? Yes, we refer to, to, uh, to do this, uh, this work. But I just try to cover the subject because there are many people, not because I'm expert in the field, but I thought many others, they will entertain this question. That's why I put them. Uh, uh, Professor Zubin, good to see you. On the <laughs> yeah, good to see you, Professor Tanya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not too much yeah, I, I think your, your, your suggestion <laughs> is very important because when I watch the video and uh, some some tumor are breeding very uh, abundantly and uh, it's very the uh, blood supply was so abundant maybe the protection with the balloon and the pre-operative uh embolization with uh, like onyx this kind of material could be help uh, in removing the tumor yeah right. i think uh, maybe your suggestion is very important maybe Professor Wang can consider uh, uh, in, uh, recruit some uh, radio radiologist to uh, okay. help in the preoperative uh, implantation. Uh, for the the abundant, uh, I have a, I have um, uh, supply. David, I have suggestions. Um, I do this a hybrid, and I'm <clears throat> I'm not. I don't have the experience that. Professor Wang has. Uh, thank you so much. It was a very comprehensive review, and we appreciate this. For Shaolin uh, uh, Type 3, what we did <clears throat> when it's really extensive involvement, and again, this is just uh, a different way of doing things. What we do is we, if there's extensive involvement in carotid, and we think there's high chance of sacrifice of the carotid, what we do is we do imp implant covered stent, a Viban for eight weeks, and um, come back, and uh, once we take the patient off the antiplatelet, usually six to eight weeks, uh, we proceed with the second stage because it'll allow you to be more uh, aggressive and not uh, compromise um, the artery lumen. And it works really well. Some of you do bypass, but we found that is an effective way, easier. Um, one thing. The other thing in terms of embolization, what we usually do, we have a hybrid room and we bring the uh, uh, balloon 
and we inflated <clears throat> across the bifurcation. Now, you have to be very uh, uh, sensitive because if you inflate it too much, that artery is fatigued. You can actually explode uh, uh, the artery. So you, you do that. And under direct percutaneous, you advance the needle into the carotid body and inject onyx like Professor Ben uh, mentioned. So again, we don't have the extensive experience uh, as Dr. Uh, Professor Wong has, but we try to be creative and try to involve both hybrid uh, as um, uh, uh, Professor Kanaan suggests that's the future training in, in the future. One more question for both of you. You are the expert, Professor Wang and uh, David, Professor David. Uh, did you confront with an, uh, cases where you have a limited attachment to this tumor, to the vessel, injured the vessel, that you use the patch rather than to sacrifice? Uh, sometimes uh, when the artery uh, uh, injured, we use the patch to repair okay. the wall of the artery. And sometimes we use the artificial uh, vascular to bypass. Okay. And uh, embolization, I think it, it is not helpful. How about the cover stent, just uh, uh, David mentioned. Uh, so uh, David, you mentioned the cover stent, I think it's a good idea. So it's a uh, kind of pre peripheral used covered stent? Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, you you have to put the covered stent and you have to go in the common and uh, internal. And we use a uh, Viabam, which is heparin coated. So it allows that and you expand it. Um, and you want to go a little bit longer just in anticipation of any potential injury. So to answer that, Imad, uh, even if you have potential injury, during the surgery and allow you first to be aggressive, you know, not worry about the carotid and allow it to heal for six to eight weeks. It, it allows it to get individualized from inside. And so it, 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 for me, I have, don't have the experience that as professor Wong. So it'll give me uh, a piece as I do the surgery, <laughs> not worry about it during the carotid and bypassing, so, you know. So after implantation of the covered stent, so the ECA was also sacrificed. Correct. Is yes, it yes. correct? Yeah. You sacrificed the ECA. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's for a for large, for large tumor conference. For small one, Shamblin one and two. I mean, one you can you don't need it, but for large tumors like Professor Wong, you anticipate we do that. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much again, Professor Wang, for sharing this uh, experience. Uh, is your work published already? Uh, no. Not yet. On the way. Right. Great. Thank you. I will move back. I finished my part, and uh, I think uh, Professor Boon, we would like to introduce the next uh, chair, David. Uh, thank, uh, you. thank you again. Uh, uh, here in at uh, uh, Duke, uh, it's in the morning, so good morning, and for other parts of the world, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, we're honored today to be part of this consortium and webinar to discuss uh, different topics. We already covered the carotid body tumor. And now we're going to cover, I will try to attempt to cover the um, computation of fluid dynamics. Computation of fluid dynamics is, is a field that is evolving uh, as we speak, uh, has been uh, for almost 20, 30 years, and being proposed uh, to help understand pathology and uh, pathophysiology of different uh, diseases, including uh, aneurysms, formation, rupture. Um, AVMs, uh, carotid body disease, and others. And uh, with that, it helped us to uh, differentiate between uh, hopefully stable and unstable, especially in the, uh, in the um, aneurysm world and also in AVMs. It's uh, being coupled nowadays with uh, technology like vessel wall imaging and trying to see correlation and combination and how that means. And also others have attempted to uh, combine computational fluid dynamics with 
aneurysm shape indices like size, aspect ratio, undulation, and finite element analysis to assess for fatigue, uh, for uh, strength and elasticity of the wall. Uh, Professor Degvik is a, is a great uh, expert in this field, and he's going to try to address some of the uh, topics that have been um, uh, covered by this uh, computation for dynamics. Professor Degvik. So I don't know if you hear me. I try to share my uh, presentation. Okay, so thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, my name is Ryan Jankwich. I am from uh, Germany. Uh, and right now I am um, um, in Japan, the first time in Asia, um, where I doing my um, microvascular and endoscopic fellowship uh, under supervision of Professor Kato. I start with my presentation. Uh, I am originally from Croatia, and I invite you all to visit uh, Croatia, um, our beach and sea, but I moved to the Germany because my residency and work. And in the last um, um, two months, I'm in the in the Nagoya, um, where um, I work in team with Professor Kato. Just a second, because I have problem. Okay. Uh, the possibility um, to predict the natural history of unruptured intracranial aneurysm would be the uh, utmost importance for uh, both patient and surgeons, and surgeons could more uh, precise access the risk of uh, rupture. Um, therefore, advising surgery only for those patients who um, whose rush per risk is higher than risk of treatment. Um, surgeons could um, have a clearer preoperative knowledge of not only the shape and the position of the aneurysm, but also the features of um, its wall. And knowing in advance whether an area of the wall is thinner or thicker um, could be help in the surgical planning and um, potentially um, a risk uh, potentially reduce the risk of intraoperative um, rupture. Um, the hemodynamic parameters could not be easily uh, investigated in um, living patients, in living subjects, and as feasible alternative um, um, computer fluid dynamic CFD has been widely investigated to demonstrate hemodynamic features affecting the neuro neurovascular disease, especially uh, as Professor said, cerebral aneurysm, um, alpha OM, and other tumors. Um, uh, CFD is science which connects experiment and theory, and it's very important to understand the need of uh, validation, verification of the CFD for the uh, neurovascular surgery, especially in um, cerebral aneurysm uh, when the hemodynamic results are applied uh, to surgical uh, decision making in clinical uh, in clinical uh, daily practice. Here we have the first the first paper about um, um, impact of um, CFD in aneurysm um, published by uh, Gonzalez and colleagues about 30 years ago using non-Newton um, viscosity of blood and other hemodynamic data um, through uh, computer simulation. They found that due to pressure change during systolic and diastolic uh, pressure, there is a rapid changes of the blood flow direction result um, in rapid uh, changes in wall tree stress and pressure at the proximal and distal uh, walls of the cavity. More work, what's very important, has been done since then by the application, the another viscosity, Newton um, viscosity uh, in CFD uh, in uh, aneurysm um, hemodynamically. Um, 10 years ago, after first paper, the professor St Steinman um, published the case report uh, with cerebral aneurysm, but with CFD with specific patient-specific geometry model. And uh, that revealed that hemodynamic contributes to understanding aneurysm pathology, including initiation, 
um, growth and rupture, and that we have to divide that three uh, term. Um, anatomic realism of the of the uh, lumen geometry and flow pulsality is es uh, essential uh, for elucidating the patient specific nature of the of the hemodynamic. But today, 20 years later, uh, we still have a disagreement of in the research society regarding the uh, CFD. Today, we can choose what we need from from the from the imaging. Um, the development of neuroradiological uh, neuro tools today we can um, use uh, DSA. We can use MRI. We can use C uh, CTA for the for the CFD. Um, we have a few softwares, so I think that every every software in car industry that that uh, the people use for the engineering, we also can use for the CFD. Uh, in Europe and the USA, I think that we mostly use uh, ANSYS. In Europe, we use 100%. Uh, in, in USA, all paper that I read is uh, that uh, the colleagues uh, used uh, ANSYS. Uh, there is also open form. I think that is uh, the download free on the on the internet. Um, there is also Autodesk CFD, and for Asia and especially in Japan, is um, Hemoscope very important. Uh, Hemoscope we have here use uh, view, uh, views uh, here in the in the clinic. And um, with hemoscope, you just with one click uh, visualize the blood flow features um, and automation of the of the CFD blood flow analysis to see voltage pressures, to see um, vessel wall pressure, streamline, and uh, fluctuation value. Um, why is important for the Fujita and, and why I, I I wrote the Fujita experience because in Fujita. Uh, for all aneurysm uh, preoperatively, we use CFD, and we discuss before or or um, all operation always what is the results for the for the um, aneurysm uh, for the from the CFD. And we, when we talk about CFD process, I just say uh, basically briefly um, that uh, from the preoperative CTA, MRA, or DSA. Um, the patient specific geometry are generated to the STL that is that here um, stereolithography using the mimics the the mesh are generated and with the tetrahedral and prism and um, a straight inlet extension is always proximal uh, uh, from the aneurysm to obtain uh, the fully developed laminar flow what is very important and numerical uh, numeral modeling uh, is performed using uh, some softwares, um, commercially a hemoscope or ANSYS, and the blood is uh, assumed to be uh, incompressible in New uh, Newton uh, fluid with with uh, density uh, from uh, one zero five six. Um, and the blood dynamics about null point zero zero three pascals. Um, and I told at, at the beginning about, about three different terms, three different phases. Um, this feature illustrates the unified role of hemodynamics throughout uh, aneurysm development. And that's very important. Um, initiation of um, intracranial aneurysm is induced by a high Walsh stress and a positive uh, Walsh stress vector and gradient. Uh, and through endothelial cell uh, methadone reduction, um, this hemodynamic initiates the biochemical cascades leading to a uh, product of um, proteases, most important matrix metalloproteases two and nine uh, by moral cells, um, massive um, internal el elastic lamina uh, damage and uh, apoptosis, which are all um, responsible for uh, for um, media um, thinning and bulge formation, and after initiation, we have done um, this part here: aneurysms, uh, aneurysmal um, bulge enlargement. Typically, expose the 
suck to um, increasingly uh, lower uh, Walsh stress leading to the biological uh, part that we see here on the right branch in the future. And after red circulation um, forms in the in, in the ZEG, the flow environment is likely to be dominated by low. And um, this condition is um, exacerbated if secondary um, form or flow instability increase. As these conditions change, um, here I mind the balance between eutotropic and destructive damage process that resulting in either stabilization or at the end rupture of the intracranial aneurysm. And when we talk about what we have from parameter, the most important um, at the beginning of the research was uh, Walsh stress. This is a frictional force on the um, arterial uh, produced by uh, arterial wall produced by um, blood flow in direction uh, toward um, local uh, tongue and plane. And all of the relationship uh, of the Walsh stress value to the growth of the aneurysm was incontinent in many reports. Majority of the study found a low Walsh stress associated with a higher risk of the rupture. And this is because aneurysm wall could not longer sustain the arterial pressure due to generation and the thinning uh, or the arterial walls caused by low pressure while she stress uh, pressure high in the case that we have um, uh, high while she stress at the blood flow jet impediment zone is related mostly um, to the initiation of aneurysm and after aneurysm initiation high while she stress uh, will cause degeneration of the matrix cell apoptosis and then at the end rupture or stabilization. Uh, figure on the right side shows three types of the stress related to the blood flow in the straight vessel. And the uh, three types of the stress um, are influenced by blood flow. We have shear stress, is tangential fr uh, fr 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 frictional force that we said. Uh, we have normal uh, stress due to hydrostatic pressure, which is the force um, acting orthogonally on the on the um, vessel and we had tensile stress is the force acting against the blood vessel wall and acts in the uh, circumferential um, direction um, just as the velocity field within the aneurysm done cannot be described by simply by simply calculating there is also uh, no single wall shear stress variable uh, that um, can represent the time and the space dependent influence of of blood raging on the on the aneurysm wall. And uh, we need to speak, I think, um, of wall shear stress as a vector because uh, which is simply the viscous uh, the viscous uh, force uh, uh, per unit area on the aneurysm wall, and because the wall shear stress vector varies in the both magnitude in the in the in the in the different stage, there is uh, in the different stage on the aneurysm initiation on the growth, there is no magic unique wall shear stress number. Um, now I will go through a few papers that we um, published here in Fujita, and the first one is from Professor uh, from Professor Feletti from Italian, also fellow here uh, in the uh, department of Professor Yoko Kato. Uh, they published the paper with the aim of finding potential correlation um, between CFD hemodynamic factors and the characteristic of the aneurysm valve. And um, here we can see on the on the picture that the 3D CT scan um, reconstruction of the left MCA aneurysm in the middle, the intraoperative visualization, which we, uh, we, uh, here we can see uh, the blood aneurysm. And uh, at, the, at, the, at the end, CFD analysis show uh, the bleb aneurysm or, the, or part of aneurysm have a high pressure, um, have um, a, a low wall stressor, and uh, as streamline heating uh, the blab while with high velocity. 
the colleagues um, um, in in conclusion write that uh, wrote that low Walsh stress alone is not sufficient to determine the thickness of aneurysm valve and it is association with the other parameter might, uh, might enable uh, one to distinguish preoperative lateral sclerotic and thick um, areas and the uh, challenging um, the the changing balance between these parameters could modify the features and uh, at the end the risk of the of the rupture of aneurysm valve all the time the second paper is uh, from uh, Professor Kawaguchi, um, uh, a very important paper because uh, they want to see association between pathohistology and aneurysm. And here we can see the uh, one uh, patient with rupture uh, acum aneurysm. Um, the DSA was performed and um, generates uh, 3D. 3D scan, magnetic resonance also show um, 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 at the at the at the aneurysm uh, zero uh, zero point four lines Pascal, while his stress was lower than in the surrounding area, and the oscillatory index, the second very important parameter on the blade was uh, zero point three one higher in the in the uh, surrounding area. The aneurysm. Uh, neck in this case was clipped on the day of the admission, and uh, here we can see on picture C uh, also intraoperative showing that the blade was covered with a clot and the fibrin um, net. Histological study the most important revealed absence of the intimal layer uh, and internal elastic lamina along the generative. Um, changes around the rupture point. Um, as we all know, this uh, DCI delayed cerebral ischemia is a significant cause of morbidity and mortality after aneurysmal hemorrhage. And this present study from um, CFD3 study group uh, was intended to investigate whether um, CFD can predict DSI after ACH. Uh, hemodynamic features obtained with CFD have shown that significant relationship with the aneurysm initiation, growth, and rupture. Um, the same research group um, reported also that rupture status and rupture points and hemodynamic patterns of the cerebral aneurysm were characterized by hemodynamic parameters of CFD analysis. This multicentric uh, prospective study is already ongoing, and we hope that that will provide a new, a novel, useful uh, diagnostic methods to predict these CIs before aneurysm obliteration in acute stage of ACH. Um, the something what we also do is that um, is in neurovascular how is impact uh, um, of um, the computer fluid dynamics in neurovascular syndromes and that is something new uh, in literature there is a two papers about it and the both are from the same group uh, so since the blood flow and the uh, flow and the dynamic within the offending uh, vessels plays important. Uh, basis of neurovascular syndromes. Uh, the colleagues turn to CFD to predict offending vessels and incriminate it for the for the patient symptoms. The aim of this study was to find out if CFD can correctly predict the offending vessels in the hemifacial spasm and trigeminal neuralgia, improving the outcome. And uh, at the end, so CFD analysis uh, suggested that among the three, uh, among the three, uh, 13 patients, the 12 patient had a high valve shear stressor on the, on, on the same stage, the on on the same place, and the high valve pressure and the valve shear stress at the neurovascular conflict zone are features that can predict offending vessels in uh, cases of the trigeminal neuralgia and hemifacial spasm, and. Um, I think that uh, for this study and for from that we make also the another study that we need um, uh, more patients and the, the multi-tentric study um, 
and that will be re really imp uh, in interesting to see to see uh, result. Uh, another one study uh, that uh, also um, investigate the, the CFD in in the case uh, of a neurovascular conflict. Uh, they compared fi intraoperative findings with the preoperative uh, CTA and CFD analysis um, of perianeurysmal findings um, for the for the indication of of the possible uh, vessel uh, thinning, and uh, they are also uh, on the place on the conflict site. There was also um, higher higher Walsh stress, uh, increased valve pressure, and altered uh, Walsh stress vector. Um, the something once we actually uh, this week um, will be finished the paper, and um, that is the analysis or comparison of the CFD with the surgical results in neurovascular syndrome, and that's the first paper in the literature about it. Our hypothesis is that blood vessels at the side of neuromuscular contact in patients with trigeminal neuralgia and hemifacial spasm may have specific hemodynamic characteristic because we confirmed with the two previous study. And the uh, hypothesis is that postoperatively, together with the uh, together with the recovery of the neurological status, there must be also or is uh, recovery or hemodynamics. Um, we try to analyze the data of the CFD dynamics measured preoperatively and postoperatively. So we made by all patients with the uh, with the um, um, after operation one day later CTA, and then directly perform analysis. And we also wanted to, to compare CFD result with the clinical characteristic and the surgical um, outcomes. Um, something. Probably that Professor Subin can tell us the more and and the, or suggest the uh, the protocol about about it is the uh, how we can use how we can use in the bypass surgery CFD because um, my hypothesis was that um, because of intimal hyperplasia is the uh, major cause of the graft failure and um, the underlying um, cause according to the literature of the uh, intimal hyperplasia are migration or proliferation of vascular smooth smooth muscle cell provoked also by inflammation and stretch and uh, it will be cool to see if computer fluid dynamics uh, had its use in cranial bypass surgery and that is something what can be really discussed in discussion and um, um, how was CFD contribute to our assessment in in the, um, aneurysm, um, in cerebral aneurysm? So modeling of any kind um, is really idealization of full complex system, and it provides a tool for exploring hypotheses and potentially reducing the number of variables, enabling the ranking of modeling limitations and the. Uh, CFD research on cerebral aneurysm in, 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 in this case um, has provided us with insights regarding the variability of flow within uh, the aneurysm dome um, and has illustrated uh, some of challenges and complexity we face um, uh, in attempting to further our understanding the relationship between flow, aneurysm, in, uh, initiation, a uh, wall rupture, uh, uh, wall pathology. And um, uh, furthermore, at this point, uh, in CFD provides um, actually the best tool um, for estimating the in vivo while she stress vector in the human aneurysm and as well in model in in animal models uh, of um, the secular aneurysm but uh, it is not sufficient to to uh, merely uh, increase our data um, basis of intrasacular uh, flow fields and at least statisticians to, to to make sense of uh, of the results what we need to recognize is that the role of hemodynamics will change at a different stage 
of this disease. So in the stage of the initiation, in the stage of the growth, uh, because we don't know um, how fast uh, is the growth of the uh, aneurysm. And also, um, the, hence, there is a pressing need to obtain additional data from resect tissue, from animal models, and also for clinical studies, multicentric clinical studies of aneurysm growth with time. Um, here is very important also, and what we should for the in the future to uh, interaction of the mechanics uh, with the bi uh, biology, uh, especially uh, with the um, uh, machine learning. Uh, what is the future? Here we can see a schema of mechanobiologic pathways involved in the enlargement and possible rupture of suckler aneurysm. So wash his stress induced um, changes in endothelial production of um, proteolytic and mitogenic molecules. And there is shown also uh, intramural stress induced changes in uh, metal proteinases and uh, molecules by fibroblast. Uh, and there, uh, this mechanobiologic change likely results in significant um, regionally varying uh, turnover of the collagen uh, related to aneurysm, inception, stabilization, and the rupture. Also in the future direction, we should think about novel fluid soil growth models, um, which combine fluid and solid mechanics analysis. So the vascular wall uh, with descriptions of the, of the kinetics of biologic growth and remodeling provide a more general framework uh, to explore aneurysm evaluation and also to prove our test hypothesis. And additionally, there is need to be a more uh, resourceful, creative in our use of clinical data. For example, combining data from multiple um, imaging modalities to improve the accuracy of segmented aneurysm ge geometry, um, the recent application of the methods of the data simulation to computer uh, to CFD provides a promising approach for improving the reliability, accuracy of CFD studies using the data and uh, more uh, researchers are needed to further um, characterize the nature of the blood flow. Um, I think that we should, the first of all, um, uh, to research uh, the laminar and uh, the laminar uh, blood flow and then compare uh, new things with the with the aneurysm initiation rupture and growth and uh, um, blood flow contribute to the to the understanding of the blood flow contribute to the improved understanding of the formation and the growth of aneurysm and also future uh, studies must correlate hemodynamic parameters with the rupture risk based on the solid clinical evidence and Thank you very much. That's all from my side. Well, so Professor Jankovic, that was a, a, a full review and we appreciate it, um, a comprehensive review. Uh, as you mentioned, this field has been ongoing for almost 30, 35 years. And um, there has been multiple schools around the world, here in the United States and Europe, that had and tried and attempted and put tons of research money from NIH to use this tool as predictive of aneurysm rupture. And as of today has failed miserably. Um, part of it is because of the limitation. One of the major limitation <clears throat> of this CFDs is it's all built on assumptions. And the assumption is uh, the flow, inflow, outflow. Uh, we all assume one, um, one parameter for all these patients, even though these patients are, 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 are far, far from being similar to each other. Even within a single patient, you have, uh, you only measure one time point. If you were able to, uh, people are changing, uh, pressure changes, uh, conditions changes. Also the viscosity, you assume all people have the same hematocrit, hemocrit. So there's a lot of assumptions built in this, um, this model. 
And we as a group, we tried for 20 years and other David Steinman and ever have tried and tried and tried. And we even used the QMRA where we uh, uh, calculate um, in time, at one point in time, um, the inflow and the outflow. And again, that itself is not reflective because if you put the patient MRI, they have a lot of them are claustrophobic, they have hypertense, it doesn't represent true uh, measurement. So uh, in short, um, as now in the NIH, as a person who will review this, we say CFDs generate beautiful pictures. Uh, yes. But um, a very few people are now getting funded because of it's being failed. So the goal is the future is to combine, and others in our group have done that, where we combine demographics. You have to include smoking, history mm -hmm. of hypertension, genetic factors, uh, female versus male. You cannot assume male and female are the same, and even in this fluid dynamics. Uh, part of it is because the wall structure is different. Women have fiber muscular dysplasia. Men don't have that. Uh, hence why men has more, I mean, female has more disease. So we are trying to involve finite element analysis, um, microenvironment where we test um, the cytokines, chemokines. So it has to be a very comprehensive uh, review. Uh, people attempted to combine um, this uh, as a multi-center, but they failed because they disagree on the way how they analyze CFDs. We uh, had a consortium where we invited uh, world leaders in CFD to come to the uh, United States to kind of unify that, and they didn't agree on the mythology, how to do that. So it's really a lot of work needed to be done in that. I'm not undermining the work, is again, but uh, again, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's very primitive and theoretical at this point. We all revert to it as theoretical. Um, as in terms of this is an aneurysm, have people, uh, Ali Araj have done it in ABMs and he's studying that in ABMs now. Um, as in terms of microvascular decompression, everything, do you guys also um, uh, do a vein uh, arterial or only veins uh, when you do CFDs or both? Both. We try to do both. Okay. And how does it change before and after the... Um, decompression so uh i discussed this uh last week with with uh, our surgeons here um the problem is that by decompression you moved the vessels and this is the first limitation and the biggest limitation that you don't have the same the same vessel before and the uh, and before and the after surgery and that's exactly. very big limitations and also you introduce, uh, you change the, uh, the, the, the course of the art because when you put the Teflon, you, you yes. create a different, different uh, peri-environmental stress. And because of that, the dynamics change. So yeah. the prediction of that, I, I, I don't see it. Now back to, um, uh, you know, bypass. I think there's a need for it um, to predict if the bypass will survive or not. And again, you have to use patient specific parameters and environmental thing. So in, sh in short, I applied you for this work, uh, keep good the work, uh, but there has to be very comprehensive. And at this point, um, you know, it's still very limited. Thank you very much for great comments. Is, is there any, anyone who want to ask any question? You may raise your hand or can speak. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I have one question for you, uh, Dr. Dragon. Uh, what do you think that, uh, like what Prof. Uh, David had mentioned, uh, probably different software, the computational result may be different. Uh, what, what do you think that with the same software that you have, uh, would the same result uh, reproducible uh, if it's segmentation done by different person? Because I believe that uh, the, the segmentation, depending on how long segmentation that you use for, for producing your result may have different results. And secondly, uh, do you think that the timing of the acquisition of the imaging during CTA would also affect the result? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the first of all, um, I used in Europe ANSYS and here Hemoscope. 
and I see a, f a big difference because of because of uh, measurement, uh, just about small things about vessels. And the second one, um, your second question was, uh, can you repeat please about the 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 timing, the timing of the uh, image acquisition by CTA? Would that affect your result too? The problem is that um, in all papers they all write that the there is a rupture, but but it's it's a big limitation in the whole aneurysm complexity. We we analyze just one sequence and just one moment of the CTA. And uh, my group in the in the Croatia we try to 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 compare uh, DSA. We try to to measure uh, aneurysm before rupture. We try to 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 make DSA uh, build uh, DSC. So the video of the DSA in systol and in diastole, and that's not possible. Uh, we talk with 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 many neuroradiologists, with with many specialists. That's not possible. That is so so small uh, uh, between uh, time between systole and diastole that you can that you can you you cannot see that. And that's the problem. Uh, I saw Dr. Sudil uh, raise his hand. Dr. Sudil, do you want to ask a question? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Professor uh, Jankovic, uh, thank you for your presentation. And uh, uh, I also noticed that you mentioned that maybe we can co cooperate in the future uh, for the bypass, after the bypass measurement and uh, for the aneurysm, I think uh, by now you you only measure the uh, shear stress or any other parameters like okay. in situ the in, uh, intersect energy loss. I think this is an uh, important parameter if you can measure or calculate. Yes. Um, we use we use OCA as oscillatory index. We use uh, Walsh stress, and we use the vector of the Walsh stress here in the Japan. But that is also what for what software can can measure. Um, there's several parameters they can use. It depends again on the software. So the inlet flow that's really important. Residence time. Um, there's yes, several there's several parameters you can use, but the ones that has stood uh, the time test is both um, wall shear stress and the OSI, which is isolatory index. Uh, <clears throat> again, the theory there's also different schools. One of them is the Buffalo, which kind of championed that that high flow shear stress induces aneurysm, low shear stress leads to rupture. If you ask the uh, Jason Mason, uh, the other schools, they I argue the opposite. It's high flow shear, shear stress is the cause of, um, of, of the rupture. So again, there's a, multiple schools, multiple different opinions, but there's different parameters. And the goal is really, as you mentioned to Professor Jankovic, it's at the end, is combine all these parameters as comprehensive 360 degree. You have to kind of put all this together. We are now, we're doing is uh, we wearable, uh, where we could have the patient wear like a watch, uh, iPhone, and measure the pressures over time and take pressure uh, images on two different times. Um, we, at one point, we also induce patient hypertension uh, to kind of see how that changes. So the field is out there. I think one of the things is the studying for the bypass, it will be helpful because we don't know, um, I know that Fatty Charbel could, talks about the flow and the velocity, but Professor Ben can say more about that. Um, but if, if we can see uh, right where the bypass is, how the, um, the shear stress, the oscillatory, the inflow, <clears throat> and see if at the time of the bypass and follow it longitudinally and see if it leads to intimal hyperplasia or something else. So that's an exciting field too. Yes, I agree. But uh, I think for the bypass, the main, uh, in, uh, the most important parameter is the pressure, the pressure difference between the donor and the recipient artery. And now I'm measuring it. 
uh, after the uh, before and after the uh, bypass. Yeah, mm. this uh, I think by now we can measure it uh, very uh, accurately mm. by insert the uh, me, uh, the detector of the pressure into the uh, side branch. Yeah, mm -hmm. and measure the uh, and the local energy loss. Actually, it's quite difficult to calculate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I think it's, uh, it's uh, quite important for the aneurysm because the local energy loss may be the main cause for the expansion of the dome and maybe the rupture. I think it's maybe more important than the uh, sh shear stress. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sude, you want to ask questions? Yeah, uh, I don't want to ask questions, but I have got a few comments to make. <clears throat> uh, one thing is that uh, I would agree with high wall shear stress being the driving force for aneurysm initiation and uh, progression. Uh, and as uh, Dr. Zubin has said, the energy loss is being dissipated in, the, in terms of an expansion of the wall to develop an aneurysm. There is no magic number for this wall shear stress, but there is a magic range. Each blood vessel has a normal physiological range of wall shear stress for maintaining uh, homeostasis. Now, the other aspect that I wanted to uh, talk about was use of different software and different techniques. Uh, in our group has also worked on almost close to 100 aneurysms with CFD. And what we do is we uh, initiated with comparison of the software, use three different types of software, see whether the results are matching. Second, we model the aneurysms uh, you, by, by different investigators, by different participants in the group, and then go in for grid independent studies. So we come into a, a conclusion that one particular grid with fine mesh is suitable for developing the results. That is, any person who uses that grid will get the same reproducible results. And the third is we go in for patient-specific analysis. We go in for patient-specific velocity measurements using TCD, both preoperatively and intraoperatively. And also patient-specific geometry with, uh, with the DSA and CT angiogram. A <clears throat> uh, couple of other points that I want to discuss was, one is on trigeminal neuralgia, the CFD analysis. The it is not the hemodynamics that causes the trigeminal neuralgia. It is the position of the vessel in the axle of the nerve that causes the trigeminal neuralgia. And once that pressure is relieved from there, the, uh, the neuralgia is relieved. It is the critical length of the superior cerebellar artery in that position or any other artery that determines whether uh, trigeminal neuralgia will develop or not. So it is natural that the wall shear stress and the parameters will get normalized once you revert the course of the vessel to a normal course. Then about bypass, uh, <clears throat> routinely for low flow bypasses, it is very difficult to image the vessel to get a model. So typically we can go in for high flow bypasses wherein you use a radial artery or a saphenous vein graft and do CFD on that. We are well on our way to do such CFD analysis in high flow bypass. And lastly, I want to say that uh, as uh, Dr. David has said, that CFT is still far from reality. But if engineers and doctors speak the same language and sit together and discuss, all those assumptions need to be sunk in somewhere to bring it as close to reality to mimic nature. That's very difficult, I know. But that is when CFD will play its clinical role. Thank you. Thank you. Great comments. Thank you very much. Uh, that's okay. uh, so. If there's no further question, uh, we will be called upon uh, uh, Professor David for his conclusion, uh, concluding uh, remarks. Yeah, well, we thank uh, Professor Janvik for this uh, overview, and we thank all the participants uh, for their uh, insight. And uh, again, the insight discussion like this is what uh, um, uh, promote med science and improve medicine, and hopefully, together as a one family around the world. We can come together, hopefully resolve this uh, disease. So collaboration is is very very important. Exchanging opinion with open minded and uh, and and exchanging access data. Uh, I would love to access all the data in India and China 
myself here, uh, the tremendous uh, valuable experiences there. Uh, I think so collaboration among different platforms is the future and the answer to science. Thank you and everybody have a great day or evening. Thank you, uh, Professor David. Uh, before Thank you. we end, uh, prof uh, probably we ask uh, Professor Zubin, do you, do you have any number of the today participant, Professor? You want to update? Yes. Uh, by the WeChat, we, we have around the one 1,000 audience for this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of the Education Committee of the SNS and President Professor Yokato, I would like to thank both speaker today, Professor Wang Tao and Professor Dragon Jacobic, as well as our Chair, Professor Imet Kanan and Professor David Hassan for the time and support for the SNS webinar. We also would like to express our sincere uh, gratitude to Professor Zubin for broadcasting this webinar on WeChat channel. As he mentioned, we have uh, more than 1,000 people join us live. And regarding the next webinar, I would like to inform our viewer that we'll be live on 11th of March. This will be Professor Jamie Van Opel from the United States of America, who will be talking about surgery of olfactory uh, neuroblastoma. And the second speaker will be Professor Awesh, Aw Awad Shesh uh, Jaiswa from India, who will be talking about a minimally invasive surgery of intraventricular tumor. And the webinar will be chaired by Professor Luis Boba from uh, Brazil. So until we meet again on 11 March, it's bye-bye from all of us. Uh, thank you very much.